Hey guys, so I wanted to do a little bit of a quick unboxing today from my friends over at Steve's Leaves. So in midst of this whole coronavirus pandemic that has swept the world, I was actually supposed to go out to Dallas, Texas and Austin, Texas and do a little bit more activities around my book, How to Make a Plant Love You, and also do some more plant one on me's, including another shoot at Steve's Leaves. But unfortunately, as you can imagine, everything has come to a halt. And as a result, Steve and Darren over at Steve's Leaves have sent me a little care package of plants. So I wanted to share this all with you. So without further ado, let's start looking at what plants he may have shared. Now, I have to admit that this box has been sitting in my house for about two days more than it should have been sitting in. And part of that reason is because Lo and behold, I wanted to actually shoot this video and I didn't get around to doing that. So let's see what we have in store. Here we go, I have a little letter from him. Summer Rain, we are so sorry that you're not able to visit us because of COVID-19. Because you're gonna be stuck for a while, we wanted to send you a few extra plants and a little bright spot in the current darkness. Please take care and let us know uh, what you think. You know, I just wanted to let you know that we started this Plant One Forward initiative. And Plant One Forward is essentially an initiative to acknowledge that many of our plant shops and our, uh, our favorite nurseries and garden centers are going through a difficult time, like many of us are going through a difficult time. But once we get through this, and we will pull through, uh, COVID-19. We want to be able to see our plant shops still there and many of them have had to shutter their doors, they've had to lay off employees, um, but they are finding innovative ways in order to be able to remain open to a certain degree. So maybe this is online sales, maybe this is through curbside pickup or um, having CDC guidelines of social distancing within their stores. Maybe this is through local delivery still. So the idea behind the Plant One Forward initiative is that we can enact a change and a positive change in people's lives by simply purchasing one plant, sending that to somebody that you love, and that helps around at least three people and probably the employees of the plant shop that you have supported. So it's you, it's the person that you're giving the plant to and also the shop and everybody else that the shop supports. And so one equals three people, three equals nine, and so on and so forth. So I think that is a wonderful initiative to get behind. Oh boy, this is one that I have um, wanted for a while that I've seen. This is called Begonia melambulata, and you could see those bullets right here. They just have this kind of like texture to this leaf that is so super cool. Look at that. It looks like frog skin. I'm gonna have to, you know, go up a little bit closer to this so you could see. Yeah, and I am doing all of this by myself, by the way, because Sonder, my camera person, is also social distancing and is at his home. And, uh, and I am going to be filming all of this myself. So, oh, mind you, I've seen this in some botanic gardens and also we did a tour at the Amazon Spheres and this is one of the ones that you may have seen there. Okay, now let's see what's up next. Oh, so back to the Plant One Forward initiative. On my blog at homesteadbrooklyn.com slash blog, you are going to be able to find all the plant shops that are participating from all across the world. Right now, there's well over 100 plant shops who have announced that they're actually participating in this, and you'll find out how they're participating. And mind you, you should check with those plant shops because news and ordinances change every day. And, um, and so some of the, the information may not be as accurate. And also if you are a plant shop or nursery, um, specifically ones that are brick and mortar that have had to either um, change their, their business uh, or even some online businesses that are wholesalers slash retailers that uh, usually sell to these garden centers, I encourage you to actually submit your plant shop. And there are ways in order to be able to do that on my blog at homesteadbrooklyn.com slash blog. All right, you know, just looking for different ways in order to be able to have a positive impact on people during this time. 
Oh, I didn't even show this to you. I got a little ficus lyrata here, and it seems appropriate because I'm like under my ficus lyrata right now, and this one's such an uh, adorable little one. I haven't seen something this small in a little while, especially because I've been around my big 14-foot uh, ficus lyrata. Ooh, so this is one of his new releases. This is Begonia Steve's Leaves Yellow Jacket. And I really love that color. This one, if I have space for it, I might actually put this in my kitchen because uh, I love that kind of shock of red. And typically I would take coleus, um, which are a type of plectranthus. You can remember coleus is a very easy plant to propagate and to grow. It's usually planted outside in like garden beds. And in the winter months or in the late fall months, I'll usually take cuttings from the community garden and I'll start them in my home. And they just provide this really beautiful color of red that goes up against my uh, green wall and contrasts it very nicely. But I've also liked to use begonia leaves because certain cultivars like this begonia Steve's Leaves Yellow Jacket, which I don't think has actually even been released yet to the public, at least not in the time when I'm actually filming this video. And, uh, and that kind of provides a nice shock of color, you know, to the way contrasting green kitchen as well. Okay, let's see what's up next. Well, this is nice to see. This is a Raphidophora tetrasperma. So I, I could always use one of these and that means I could take some extra cuttings for when we actually do come back together and do plant swaps. Um, this could be one that is uh, very popular. Not everybody gets their hands on these, but these are very prolific plants and very easy in order to be able to take cuttings off of. And um, yeah, so I don't mind having uh, another one of these if I could you know, share it down the line at another plant swap when we all feel comfortable getting back together. You know, and I, that's one of the sad things, you know, I think that just when the community of plant lovers were coming together, doing plant swaps all across the world, we have this virus that actually hits us and um, all of us, not just the plant community, but everyone. And uh, we have to think of new ways actually to come together. That's why I think like the Plant One Forward initiative and many other initiatives that are, are starting to crop up from the community are important because it actually gels us together and keeps us together through this time of social distancing. This is one that I had ordered and this is a Begonia pustulata. And I don't know how this one is to keep because I've never kept it before, but I really like the coloration. It's really hard to see here, but it has this kind of like lavender flecking and actually has like a little bit of a hairy leaf. So I am not sure exactly how this one is going to keep. Beautiful red undersides there if I show you that. But I, uh, I'm willing to give it a try. Okay, what is next? Oh. Well, this is a fun one because I'm sure Chad Husby from Fairchild Tropical Gardens is going to be excited. This is Ficus deltoidea. And I don't know if you could see this, but some of them have the more characteristic triangular leaf that we are, we acknowledge. And then others have a leaf that looks like this on the same plant. So this is more like of an oblong shape and this is a more of a deltoid shape. And, um, you know, I talked to Chad and you should definitely check out some of the tours that I have done with Chad Husby uh, in the Fairchild Tropical Botanic Gardens because he is a big fan of Ficus deltoidea. And he said at one point the scientific name was Ficus diversifolia, diversifolia, so a diverse foliage. And he said that seems a little bit more appropriate because there are so many different forms and variants of ficus deltoidea, which by the way is an epiphytic plant, so that means it's growing on other plants. Very few actually grow like in the ground, like in soil. So uh, so this is an interesting one, something to think about. You know, oftentimes growers will grow this in a typical peat mix, but if the peat mix is not, um, you know, if it's, it's loosely fitted in the peat mix, I will then give it a little bit more of an epiphytic mixture in order to be able to grow this. So this is great because I'm collecting a bunch of varieties and forms of ficus deltoidea. Ooh, another beautiful um, one. This is begonia red kiss. So this is another one that I could probably put if I have, if I have the room, if I have the room in my kitchen. So this is a red leafed variety with some black in the central vein area, which is so nice. Also has a little bit of a metallic sheen if you could see that. So you could see between this one 
and this one if I hold it up. So this one has a little bit more green, the begonia yellow jacket, and then this one's the red kiss. Must be so much fun to be able to name these plants. Actually, if you're looking out for my videos, there'll be some opportunities for you to be able to name some plants. So look out for those. Ooh, so I have to tell you about this one. This is the Maranta Lucanora Silver Band. And you might have seen that I have done a lot of coverage of my Maranta Lucanora. I even had this beautiful time lapse showcasing my Maranta Lucanora. Now, unfortunately, when I had my house mouse problem, some of the plants that were ravaged, I mean, literally eaten down to the nubs, were some of my precious peperomia and also my Maranta. I also had this small leaved variety of Maranta Lucanora that was decimated, was utterly decimated. So this plant was one of the ones that got decimated and there was one leaf on it that was serrated on all edges. And I hoped, I cut it back, I let it, I still watered it a little bit now and again just to keep the moisture up in the soil so it wouldn't dry out. And I hoped and I waited for about three months for the plant to see if it would emerge because if some of you have kept Maranta, you would notice that they actually have a pretty, I don't know, like a pr pretty resilient root system. And um, so I was hoping that there would be some life that would pop up and there was no life that was popping up and I was, I was devastated. So I got my Maranta Lucanora silver band from Steve's Leaves and they were kind enough in order to be able to put one aside for me, which is just, Wonderful, I am going to, you know, take care of this so well. And now that my house mouse problem is resolved, um, I, will, uh, I will be able to cherish this. And I was actually gonna do a whole episode on the house mouse, um, but I didn't actually catch a lot of the, the video footage. But I will tell you that my house has been going under construction, unelected un construction for quite some time. And there were all these holes that were poked in from the wall outside. And so there must be a lot of mice kind of living in the walls of the building. So basically it took about one day, two days to be able to identify all the holes, patch them up because sometimes the mice could get in through like a quarter inch. It's pretty crazy. So it was just patching up all those holes and taking care of the situation and just monitoring it and making sure that the house mouse wouldn't come back. But Anyway, so let's do a little, that was it. Let me do a, a quick tour of what we have. So we have the Maranta Lucanura Silver Band. We have the Begonia Red Kiss. We have the Ficus Deltoidea. You could see multiple different leaves there. We have the Raphidophora Tetrasperma. Begonia pustulata. Ficus lyrata. And this one, I guess, has a, um, a cultivar name, which I didn't uh, realize. Bambino. So bambino usually means probably tiny. So I would imagine that this is just a really tiny version of Ficus lyrata. Begonia melambulata. And also Begonia steve's leaves yellow jacket. So how about that? All right, that was my unboxing. So I hope you enjoyed it. And guys, stay safe, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye. Interested in developing a deeper relationship with the people and plants around you? Then check out my book, How to Make a Plant Love You. Cultivate green space in your home and heart. More information up on my blog at homesteadbrooklyn.com. And if you're looking for more tactical plant care, then you could turn to the Houseplant Masterclass, which is the first online audiovisual course on houseplant cultivation, care, maintenance, and more at houseplantmasterclass.com.